Hi there folks and welcome to another episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. Today we're going over to my buddy's house and I traded off a 1967 StarCraft Mer with a Mer Cruiser 120 horsepower inboard outboard. We discovered a mystery oil leak and uh, it has a mystery oil leak. I went over there last night and put some time lapse down and uh, I'll show you some of that here in a minute. Not that interesting time lapse. I might not even put it on time lapse. Let's just say no for now. Discovering where the oil leak's coming from. Well, I've had literally tens of these stern drives I've taken off. I've never seen an oil leak. Um, well, I probably say I say that wrong. An oil leak coming from the upper gearbox seal, where the input unit CB joint and shaft go in there. So I've got a. Uh, pulled it off last night you guys see me pull plenty of those stern drives off basically you know four gear six bolts take the lift cylinders off bounce a couple times comes off in your lap right so i'm going to be doing something tonight i've never done before which is replacing that upper gearbox seal and we'd normally just i'd just have another whole used out drive that i'd stick on there that's in good shape but the 67 had a reverse lockout thing, so when you basically put it in reverse and idled backwards, it would have to hold it, but then the hydraulic cylinders could lift it. These are single, sing, uh, one-way cylinders. They lift only. And the pump runs in reverse or something coming down to relieve the pressure so that the weight can bring it back down. So 67, I don't know what all boats they did that on. I know my 68 has a dual-action cylinder on it, lift cylinders on it, a dual-action pump. So we thought about actually just switching a few things out, but decided because the stuff I have doesn't fit the 67 as far as the click, click in lock and stuff, we decided we're gonna repair this upper gearbox and then possibly this winter upgrade to something in the, in the 70s that has the dual cylinders, it has the bigger cylinders for sure too, uh, and the, port through the bottom of the stern drive that lets the pump hoses come out through the bottom and something that's more current more replaceable stuff that you can get from SEI Marine uh, products uh, at a reasonable price so we'll probably upgrade that this winter and put a dual dual pump on it that pumps up and down you know so forward and reverse is what I'm saying so anyway when we get there I'm going to show you taking apart the upper part of this gearbox uh, it's going to be maybe slightly painful video, not really. Uh, show you some of the things. This first time I'm taking one apart uh, on the upper gearbox part. But there again, I went to the YouTube University like everybody else is doing, which is what you guys are doing right now. To either you're watching me for entertainment or you're watching to learn how to do it yourself. And uh, this one, this one might be titled. Right now, it's looking like it's titled 1967 StarCraft uh, Partial Gearbox Takedown and Seal Replacement. Uh, we'll go, we'll just go with that for now. So, we're gonna get over there and I'm gonna show you what we got going on. Appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share. Help support the channel that way very, very much. Uh, and we'll see you in a minute. All right, we've made it here and I'm gonna show you what we got. We've removed this from the back of the boat. It's on my uh, handy dandy little cart we built in a video, a few videos ago. And what we've got to do here, this is where the leak's coming from, behind this yoke. Back up in there, there's a seal. That's the one that's leaking, letting oil come into here. You'll notice it by having a whole bunch of oil in this boot. Uh, the engine oil can't get to this boot. The only oil that can get into here is from your from your gear case. Uh, Cause when you fill this up, you're filling it up clear up to here. And that's about mid-level of that seal and you can leak out quite a bit of oil in there uh, before it stops leaking. And you don't want, you want to keep oil up in this upper end. So I'm going to show you how to take this apart. It'll be the first time I'm doing it, but there's two little circlips in here, each side of this yoke right here. We're going to take those clips out and then we're going to knock these bearings out so we can actually get this removed and get the whole thing pulled out. Relatively simple, in a manner of speaking, right? 
right on. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get this started. Okay, folks, we've got that other gearbox off the 1967 StarCraft. The reason we're back here at the shop is we got this upper uh, gear, gear assembly, bearing assembly, seal assembly, or what do you want to call it? It's like a cartridge uh, pulled out and I broke apart trying to put it back together. And it was kind of, kind of disappointed myself the way I did it. Uh, but fortunately I have this one that's off of 1968 that was locked up on the old Starcraft. I'm going to pull this, this one off, show you how it's been pulled apart and then how it should go back together and then we'll put it back in type of thing. But so if you got an upper gearbox seal leaking, that's what this one, the other one we took apart had, we determined it was a seal leaking. When you got it apart, yeah, that rubber on that seal was tried out and tired. So this one we got is replacementkits.com. Aftermarket parts you can trust. Uh, yeah. But it comes with a whole bunch of stuff. You can see all the different pieces inside there. It comes with gaskets and extra seals and other stuff you don't need. But it's one of those kits, they sell a, one kit that fits a, a whole wide array, array of different gearboxes. But this is a gearbox seal kit. So I'm guessing this has seals as well for the lower end. Uh, oh no, I'll just take that back. It's just an upper. So it replaces Mercruiser R, MR, and Alpha. Alpha 1 Gen 1 upper seal kit. So this is just for the upper seal kit. That's it. So what you're going to notice first, I'm going to get you in here nice and tight maybe. And this is the unfortunate part about this one is it's completely locked up. Now this is the part you got to take loose to get this hard cartridge out. And I can see people in the past have used a punch of some sort to possibly take this apart. But you don't want to use that. You want to use this wrench. This wrench is a special one in order to get on that and apply even pressure to all those ears to get them knocked off. Now, the problem I have with this particular one, because you may run into something like this too, is this gearbox is locked up solid. It is, it is, it is completely locked up inside. I cannot rotate anything here. There is no such thing as forward or reverse and getting that thing out of gear, in gear. Whatever happened to it on the water just seized things up. So I've got in order to get this off, you got to pull this U-joint off. And this U-joint, you got to have this lined up with an opening here so this bearing can actually pass by. But that's not going to happen now because of the, the way this is uh, locked up. So I'm going to have to take my grinder here and create a little clearance so I can get those pushed clear by. So that's what I'm going to do now. That should clear out now. You gotta do that on both sides, unfortunately. But what I've ground off for clearance isn't gonna hurt this nut. This may not look aesthetically pleasing any longer, but the next thing we do is take these little circlips. There's little circlips in here. There's little circlips like this behind the bearing. On each side here, that snap in place to keep this from coming back out once, you, once it's installed. So you gotta pop those two out because we're gonna take this joint loose so we just leave this yoke in place. Now in order to take this joint out here, and it's gonna be pretty stuck, we're gonna smack on this right here which will drive that one cap out that way. That is if I can hold on to it. See, that cap's already moving, which is good. I'm just trying to keep my hand out of harm's way, but it's not going to... There we go. See that one cap just popped out. Now I'm going to drive it back this way. There it goes. Now it caps out, now you can remove the joint. Pretty easy, right? 
And then in a situation like this, where the joint's old, as old as the boat, it's just a good idea to put a new CV joint in it. And those CV joints are relatively inexpensive. You know, like this one here would be a, a Napa. You can go to your Napa store, get this SKF universal joint that's greasable. You're good to go. Let's back you up a little bit here. Well, these are right hand threads. Nice part is everything I ground off right here. This allows this wrench to still work just fine. But as you can see, this wrench will apply pressure to all ears equally. And we're gonna see if we can beat this thing down. Just like that. I tried to do it with a pry bar. I tried to do it without this tool. And the tool just makes all the difference. And you can get these off of Amazon. Matter of fact, I'll leave a link below on the two tools that I got in this kit, which was this tool here and this tool here, which this one's for removing the prop shaft nut. So you can actually pull that out, replace seals in that. And this will just, at least it did on the other one, it'll just clear that U-joint. Come on. Did on the other one. There's none too much room there, I'll tell you that. Let's see if I can get this in there and kind of there we go. Next thing you want to do is you got a one inch shaft here that I put in here and you can pry here against the case and, and knock this out. I hope this has been in there a bit. Let's see here if I can. So that's moving right along. The other thing you can do if it seems a little tight is you can run yourself a little heat around here. Not much heat to melt anything, but enough that this aluminum will grow really fast. Come on, baby. We were just moving. There we go. And that's the whole bearing cartridge assembly right there. Pretty straightforward stuff. You got a O-ring seal right here and you got another seal inside this ring here. We'll take a look at that here in just a second. The other thing you'll find behind here in your housing will be a shim kit or shims and you can see here this one has two thick shims two thin shims this goes in there because this is kind of like a rear end in a, in a truck or old car or you know just your pinion ring and pinion gear thing set up this sets the spacing for here so when this nut is tightened up this nut here is tightened up tight it automatically sets the spacing on this gear so everything's meshed properly and not too tight so make sure you put your shims back in when you're done putting this back together because you're not replacing the bearings you're just replacing the seals now i'm going to take my a socket here which is a 15 16th i got my half inch ugga dugga here Take that right off. Now, we'll see if this pulls apart for me. There we go. There's the shaft. Look at that water in the shaft. And then, 
That's just your washer here. This is where all your seal action. Oh, wow, look at that. What the heck is that? Oh, that's part of the spring out of the old seal. That seal is, this seal actually feels pretty okay, but the spring and everything is all gutted out in it. The spring broke, it's come apart. But now this is two pieces here as well. Oh, it should be two pieces, hang on. But you got an O-ring around the outside that seals the outside of the case to this assembly. And then you got this seal in here that seals around the shaft here to make this all work. And the piece I messed up was this piece right here. Cause I was trying to use it to put the seal back in. That wasn't the right thing to do. And the only reason I'm picking the O-ring out of here before I take it apart is cause it feels like it's stuck together. Oh, this O-ring is dried out too. You gotta think about it. some of the stuff here, especially off of 68, it's, it's 50 some years old. Uh. Wow, that was in there good. But now I should be able to take a screwdriver in here and kind of pry those apart, I think. There. I didn't come about part too bad. See, that looks kind of nasty. We had to clean those up. This is some kind of steel, but I don't know what kind of steel it is. Uh, it's kind of weird. And then you got this aluminum housing here. You drive that seal out. You know, you want to support it very well, but you can drive that seal out, put your new seal in. Once you get your new seal in, this is aluminum. We've cleaned this up a little bit. Once you get your new seal in and you got your new O-ring, you can restack everything back up, slide this back in, tighten it up, and the cartridge is ready to go back in. We'll do that next. Now, when you're reinstalling this seal, you want to be very careful to get it started in good and straight. And then once it's started in straight, I'm going to put this on a nice firm surface here and I've got a steel plate that I'm going to use to drive it down to make sure this thing is sitting there perfectly flat and not sitting in there, you know, crooked. So we're going to do that now. Once you've got the seal driven down in there nice and flat, Obviously this one here goes on here and then the O-ring has been between there. So in our little package, the other part we need is the big O-ring, which is this guy right here. We're gonna make sure this is good and clean and we'll put this together. That all gets sandwiched in there like that. And that's your new external seal. This is your internal seal. And this is a double lip seal which has a spring on this side and a spring on this side, which is keeping the oil in, oil from getting out, water from getting in. Pretty cool. Now inside here, you wanna make sure, you know, these might have spacers or shims or whatnot. You wanna keep this all clean. Now, if your unit was all crappy and dirty to begin with, you need to flush this out, but this one was pretty clean other than a little darkness from some, you know, lube that's gotten trapped for years behind things. Boy, this is a, they don't make them like this anymore. Well, they probably do, but this has Timken bearings made in USA. But I'll tell you what, these bamboo towels that I got from the big box store that you normally have like 200 box, a rag, box of rags, don't be afraid to try these guys out. I really like them. They feel nice. But then this will go back on. Because this rides on the outside of the bearing here. That goes back together like that. Then our yoke will go back in here. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to check this up on a lathe. And I'm going to make this look a little bit better. Take some of this off of here. So it just, you know, it's got some roughness to it. And we'll put that back in there. We'll tighten up the nut. And this cartridge is ready to go back into, into the uh, upper gearbox. Alrighty. So we got this polished up. It is not perfect by any means. It's got a few little pits in it and stuff. From 
But we hit it with some 320 grit, spun this pretty fast and some 320 grit. That's as good as she's gonna get. So we'll put this thing back together now. And I also put some lube on that seal. So when we send this thing back through here, that we can watch it open up. And come on, baby, get in there right. There she goes. Now I'm looking around the seal here just to make sure the seal didn't get tucked in anywhere. Looks pretty awesome. All we got left to do is put the washer and the nut. And the cartridge will be back to complete. The only thing loose is this, but this all, that all feels pretty good. Yeah, I like that. What we'll do before we slip it back into the housing is we'll put some oil on the outside of this so it goes in there so this O-ring will stand a good chance of sealing. And we'll also make sure that this piece is on this side because that's the shim that came with it to make sure that our gear spacing is all correct so i'm just going to kind of keep this over here to kind of keep it from getting screwed up a little bit maybe there we go and i'll wrap this in some these green towels just to keep it all together for transportation purposes so that's ready to go back on be sealed up and not leak anymore is the plan uh, I've, this video started off doing the work at my buddy's place and then he had to go out of town for a few days so I went over and stole the boat told him I was gonna take it and try to finish it up here at the marina because we don't live that far apart from one another so I drug it over here so I got handy my handy tools around and uh, plus I can just walk out my back door work on it go back in the house and hopefully move the project along a little bit faster than we were going but you know, pulling the out drive off, pulling the gimbal housing off is what we've done here. And we're into, we're into replacing the, both the gimbal boot and the exhaust boot and the little boot that goes on the shift cable so we can seal the rear end of this thing up uh, really well. And we've been, we've been kind of going back and forth with our thought processes as to how to put it back together. And in this video, I'm going to show you how we did it on this particular 1967. Uh, the newer ones, I know a lot of people have shown videos where you can replace the gimbal boot by not pulling everything apart. It is a wrestling match. There is, it is not easy to do. And to get tools and stuff in there is not easy to do. In this instance, we had to pull the whole out drive off anyway because we had obviously a, a seal leak that I just got done showing you how we put the new parts back together. Uh, those have been assembled. I didn't show you assembling it back into the, uh, into the upper gearbox because basically that's just sliding it back in, making sure there's some oil on the surfaces so when you work it back in, it doesn't tear the seals. And then putting that little funny flower wrench on there and tightening it back down with the shims in the proper place that we're, as we took them out. Um, I've taken apart a couple of them now and sure enough, there is some different thickness shims depending on the year, the model and the manufacturing process and how they are setting these things up. So the gear pattern is the way it needs to mesh and go together. But I'm gonna go out here and show you what we're, where we're at so far, show you what we've done so far and, and the whys. And the one thing I think is very key here, and people have, people have told me about this, and this, this is the stuff you wanna use. It's a, a Marine Adhesive 3M, Marine Adhesive 5200. It's a tube of it. One tube is enough to do this whole job easily enough. The other thing that my, Buddy and I learned pretty quick, and I'll show you here in a minute, is that we put on the two boots and the upper boot was trying to, as we tightened up the pipe clamp, it tried to come off of there. And very aggravating. So the third time we put it back on there, we put it on there, tightened the clamp down. And I might've said this early in the video now that I'm thinking about it. If I did, I'll cut it out. Maybe I won't. But we tightened it down just enough to hold it and let this stuff set up. 
Then we started reading the instructions. It's like, how long do you think we should let it set up? And this was saying, so here's the interesting part. And here's where I'm wondering how good this is. I mean, it's good. Don't get me wrong. Things that cure slower uh, tend, tend to have higher strengths. This says it becomes tack-free in 48 hours. That's when it's no longer tacky. Hours. And cures in approximately seven days at 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Relative humidity may make the bond may make the bond with them four hours. Long time. But as luck would have it, the part that was trying to come off on us, we've done this literally now. When was this? He was gone all week. We did it. It has been seven days pretty much to the day since we installed the other part of the boot on and the, the front half we still got to install the back half so i'm really kind of like nervous about possibly him going out and using it this weekend when you know the clamps are going to be doing a lot of the work and the, the adhesive part it would be doing less work at this moment in time but him and i'll talk and we'll make some decisions it might not hit the water this weekend but it'll definitely be ready to hit the water next week because this will be fully cured and there again like i said uh, another one i've heard uh in australia I follow a few uh, marine channels in Australia. Uh, I think it's Danger Marine is another one. And they use a lot of, on sealant like this, they use a, in Australia, I think it's called Sikaflex. I'm not gonna pronounce that right, but Sikaflex, I think is what they call it. And it's, it's an equivalent, I believe, to this uh, Marine Adhesive 5200, the 3M Marine Adhesive, adhesive slash sealant 5200. So far, the stuff that has stuck to this tube and dried, and things that I've tried to peel off my tools, it is, it is tough stuff, and it is, sticks really good. So once this is on there, I have a high confidence that it's going to be doing what I want it to do. Okay, here we are. Now I'll get you down inside here a little tighter, I think, if I can. So far, we've got the sealant on this inner boot in here. We've installed this hose here and got the clamp tightened up there. This is the clamp up in here that is not currently tight. Oh, hang on. That is, this one that holds this boot is not currently tightened down, but I want to show you that there is no give on that. That sealant is sealed. It is glued. The the At this point, the pipe clamp here is just a feel-good effect. Now, we do have a situation where we're going to have to pull this onto the other, the gimbal part that goes on here. And same way here, we've sealed this up and tightened it down. That's going nowhere. The only thing that's going to give out this time, um, we had this separate before down in here. And what's going to give this time is going to be actually be the rubber is going to give before the glue gives. I'm pretty confident in that. All right, now what I've done in this area here is we've drilled a hole in the side here. You guys are going to think that's nuts to drill a hole through there, but this hole doesn't do anything or mean anything. It doesn't even really you know, weaken the structure. But right here I've got a... 932nd socket on a swivel on an extension on my ratchet so I can go right inside here and access and this is the easiest way I found to do it without having a whole bunch of you know problems but you can get let me get you right in here you can get right in here and get that um, socket right on the you know pipe clamp hose clamp and then the other thing we've done is you know you kind of plan out how you're gonna how are you gonna get to the rest of the things here because we got this piece to put on right I'm gonna back you out just a little bit and so me and my buddy we were doing some strategy on how the heck should we attach all this stuff well the next hardest one to get at is gonna be inside here inside this area here but we think we can get at it possibly because there's, there's going to be a hose right here. This hose is going to connect onto here. Uh, and we'll put that hose on there and we'll tighten up the clamp. But then I think, can you guys see this? Okay. I'm pretty confident once this, this hose is here that the other big side clamp that we can sneak up through here with the same kind of socket deal, possibly. 
and get up on here and get that, you know, tighten that clamp down. That's the game plan. And then the bottom one, we can get on here uh, and get it put on as well in the similar manner. But we can access it from the bottom, possibly. That's, that's my game plan. I'm hoping it'll work. I'm hoping this has to come out just a little bit. But first off, let's get this clamp. And then, oh, there's more. There's always more. This joker here, this whole cable for a shift cable has got to slide back through here. Back to the inside of the boat. What am I hitting? Uh, who knows? I might have to climb in the boat to get that thing sweat. But that's got to go back in there. And then this clamp's got to go back up in there and clamp. And I'll put some sealing on it as well. Anyway, quite a bit going on. Um, there's other tools here that I'm going to use. Let me show you those real quick. So I made one right here. That way I can reach through this gimbal housing right here, through this way, through that hole. And I just made this a homemade job. I just cut a couple pieces of plate, welded it on some bar. But this way I can go in here, expand this out, and then pull this back. Whoops, get it in there biting hard there. And pull it back onto that housing. Now this one here is big enough to get your hand in there and kind of manipulate it and get it back over the lip. But the one they sell all the time is this little guy here, which is your exhaust boot. You can go inside here, hook inside one of them ribs, it kind of makes it oblong, and you can pull that on and get that in place and then tighten up your hose clamp. So anyway, that's the, that's the type of tools we're using here. I'm gonna put you on time lapse. I know we're starting to lose some daylight here, but I'm gonna see how far I can get tonight. And then that way the stuff can start to cure. Then I'll go ahead and put the gimbal pins back in and, uh, you know, start wrapping this up so we can actually put the out drive back on. So I'm going to switch you to time lapse. And you see if the wrestling is real. Here again, I've got this. I want this clamp to come around over to here. And I also need to, that way I can access it from this side because I'm pretty sure, yeah. Once I'm in this shift cable, there's a whole bunch of stuff in the way to get at it from right here. I am almost positive. All right. So let me back this off a little bit more. Give me my wrench. Because I'm hoping to be able to come up through here like this is what it feels like I should be able to do. I'm going to go ahead and give myself a little more slack here. And then we're going to put all that sealant on here, on here, and also on the outside of this boot right here, on the inside of this boot. So every, all that sealant can get in there and do its job. This one, you don't need any sealant on. Uh, I'm trying to think if this is going to be able to sneak. This will be snuck down in here like this, onto there. And I'm going to point it toward the outside here, toward this outside because that's where that's the only place I'm going to have access to it from the bottom. So that's that's the worst part about putting doing these gimbal boots in my opinion is just figuring out how to the best way to access your clamps without driving yourself crazy. Let's see if I can get this one on. Bad part is I got to get this cable I'm hitting some engine block stuff. Ooh, maybe I, nope. This is where it could be handy to have a second person to help you on this. I'm gonna see if I can hang this somehow. Nope, nope, not like that, nope. Maybe like that, that I can pull enough slack out of it to get it in. Hey, do me a favor, thank you. Perfect timing. There's a cable pointing in this way on the back there. I can't reach in there. Uh huh? You're doing the right one, I can hear it. Oh, I just can't see where it's coming in at.
do it a little bit here okay all right pull back i think a little bit just keep pulling back slowly slowly keep pulling a little more keep going keep going okay now forward all right that's good that's perfect okay i couldn't feel it because it was i was up into another cavity well, as you saw there, I had to have some assistance, and we got that fish through now. Um, let's see here. I want this to be facing down like this when it's in. So when that goes in, it's facing downward like that. And I'm pretty sure I can get at it from somewhere. Actually, I'm going to have it facing upward. I'm pretty sure I can get it down through here. I'm going to oblong this hole so I can come down through the top and tighten that one. But now I can get this on in here. And I'm just kind of getting this party started by getting things close. I'm going to go ahead and hook this hose up. Way this is all I don't have to wrestle with this hose anymore I tell you they just don't give you a lot of room to work on this this thing was engineered very tightly once that one's down they don't give you a lot of room to to tighten bolts up and stuff a little swivel though on a socket helps a lot coming off now the tricky part I feel is gonna get this this has got to go down and around beside this boot on the other side of this clamp like this I know you guys can't see worth a darn here I'm running out of I'm running out of some serious light here but yeah this hose is gonna go down and around underneath here and then this will go uh, these will go hardcore back so that's that's tucked way back behind in the corner as far as you can get it and then the rest of it will feed into place as we you know shove this in so we got a pre-fit here um i can't see anything on that other boot so this little boot here golly oh and there's a metal clamp that's got to go on here Golly, this is just brutal. Part of me wonders how far I can get this back, slide this back like that. Yeah, I think this one, this little boot, I'm gonna get it back here like that and I can slide it on and tighten it down. And then I can stretch it out a little bit as I'm going back and get this little clamp that goes out here that helps seal this up. There's a little funky little clamp that just slides over there. And kind of crimps okay folks it's literally been four days since i touched this boat uh this is the obviously i'm not gonna repeat myself it's the one that the video has been all about all along i find myself telling it all over again even though because there's days literally days that go by between some of these videos and episodes or clips so one of the things i wanted to show you when you're gluing on and i may be doing this all wrong but I wanted to show you guys some of the stuff. I can't see it on this application. Where did I have it that I can see it at? Hang on. I'll tell you a little story. I had one guy leave a comment I thought was, 
I get it. He was concerned about my health. Says, I'm not a doctor, was how he let off. And I'm like, thank you for clarifying that. Um, I'm really concerned about your health. My guess is you have a lot of sleep apnea and that uh, you probably have, I don't remember if he said high blood pressure or thyroid problem or whatever. He gave me a whole bunch of diagnoses, let's call it, because I breathe hard. And I've always been a noisy breather, per se. What I'd call a noisy breather, my wife would whistle out and watch TV and it's just the way I breathe. But we're in here, I'm looking through my bone pile here and I can't see it on anything I have here. Okay, I wanted to explain something. But anyway, let's go back to that topic. And, <laughs> and the bad part is where this microphone is at, it picks up that. So it's just the way I breathe. I don't have high blood pressure. I don't have sleep apnea. I don't have any of those fun things. Uh, but <laughs> I just thought it was funny that he was concerned about it. But uh, it's just the way I breathe sometimes. And I'm, I can find myself going, <sighs> but that's just my throat. That has nothing to do with my lung capacity, my heart rate, none of that stuff. It's all in great shape. But, so I find myself trying to hold my throat a little differently while I've got the mic on to prevent you hearing Darth Vader sounds coming out of my neck and neck hole. Okay, what I wanted to get, the point I was trying to make on, trying to show you something out here. Let's get back over here. Okay, get my breath back. Inside here we glued, this is just literally held on right now with nothing but the glue and I've got the inner clamps tight. I had um, ratchet straps holding this up here like this because the way these castings are inside here, they're not, they're not straight. They have a slight taper to them just because of the casting part. They do have little bumps around them that should help kind of hold it, but they do not because it's 3M 5200 or 5200 acts like grease. It really is, you know, it's like a, a sticky grease that just helps lubricate that thing. It goes on easy, but it also will pop back off. So in the front ones up there, we put it on and let it set for literally seven days. Because I reread the package the other day and the package did tell me that, it, I misread it because I thought that's be fully cured in 48 hours. It gets to a tacky, cons tacky consistency in 48 hours. The full cure is seven days. And it has been, I may have already said this, but it has been my experience that things that dry slower are much stronger. Your five minute epoxy versus your five hour cure epoxy. There is a strength difference there to a certain degree. Uh, maybe it's immeasurable for the naked eye person or it doesn't matter in 99 out of 100% of the cases. 99%, 99 out of 100, yeah, something like that. You know what I'm, you know what I'm trying to verbalize here. Anywho, so what I did with here, this one here is I did glue this one in and I've kept it sucked up so that boot could hold itself in place until I could actually stretch it out of here a little bit which is what I'll be doing. It holds itself in place by its own glue so I can actually now tighten that pipe clamp. So, but first of all, we're gonna turn this sideways here. We're gonna get these pins back in here for the pivot and get the little, what looks like a little nail put back in and put into place so that holds those pins in location. And then I'm gonna stretch it out and tighten all the hose clamps that I got access to. Now, you guys are gonna scream at me on this one and maybe you won't. We had put a hole in here a year ago to access this one under here. But then last week, I also, last Friday, I took this hole and I put my half inch drill bit in here and I just turned it on and I tilted it up and let it carve out this little bit of a area here. Now keep in mind, most people might go, oh my God, I can't believe you put a hole in that. It struck, it didn't hurt a thing. This thing is solid and strong. This is going nowhere. You got to keep in mind that the pivot point is up here and down at the bottom. The strength is being applied here and here. This is not going to have any impact other than I have now got good access to this clamp when I need to next time. And I also can go straight down to the shifter boot clamp with my little uh, swivel and I can access that. Everything else I can access from the bottom up. It's just an access hole to get those clamps because if you're gonna own a boot for a while, a boot, a boat for a while, these are this is just one of the modifications. I will do this exact same thing on my 67 Starcraft when I pull it off because 
I see people fighting this and fighting this and fighting this. And I think that the order we put this back together is very handy. Now I see a lot of people also not removing the, the pins here and stretching it out and working around. I tell you what, so far pulling these pins out has been a blessing and being able to get this off, work that front half, those boots on that side first, the boot on the, the bottom exhaust boot toward the front first and let that all get set up. And now this is a, you guys might correct me, might leave some horrible comments down below, but I'm gonna tell you this is a, if you're using the 3M 5200 adhesive sealant, this is probably the best way to do it because if you're using it in a manner where you're trying to stretch things out and get clamps tightened on, I don't think you're gonna stand a snowball's chance in getting that done. So this way here, I was able to glue the front part to the boat, make sure it's fully secured and cured seven days. And then I did the same thing with the back. Make sure it's fully, fully cured. We're at day four right now, but it's stuck good enough that I can actually access it, pull it out, and I don't ever have to worry about it slipping off because it is now even four days, you know, there again, 48 hours of tack. We're at day four now. So we're twice as long to the tack part. It should hold itself good enough that I can get that clamp finished, tightened up on there, get these pins in. We can slide this out drive, shift cable and out drive back on because that's what we're going to do today because um, here's where the shift cable comes in. We're gonna get that back in. We're gonna get the shift cable or shift arm back in place. I removed this simply because I wanted to get access to inside here with my uh, exhaust, man uh, exhaust bellows boot tool. So I can go in there and you spread it out and you can pull on it and pull it up over that shoulder. And then you can actually hold, that one you can actually pull up tight that way from the inside, go to the bottom and tighten it up. It didn't seem to wanna squirt off of there underneath the pressure of the pipe clamp but I tightened it up I didn't get over over zealous about it I got just zealous enough about it and uh, so now when I go to tighten this one up and this one up and plus I got to put the clamp on the outer part of the shifter boot that goes around the small diameter it's just put a little metal clamp on there just kind of clamps it that thing fits tight on there as is so I know that's a lot of verbalizing and not a lot of showing but I thought well if I could describe what I'm doing um, yes these are not fun uh, this isn't something I desire to work on a lot, but I do honestly have three to four more to do here this summer of this same nature. And this has been a good learning experience doing it this way. I will do it the same way on my 67 because on my 67, I am going to exchange all this out with something more modern um, that I can actually get uh, 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 SE 106 outdrive put on here. So I'd have more modern stuff because as you can see here, the older stuff doesn't have the, it has the hydraulics out here and out here, and those are hard to come by anymore. So that's the plan for this one next summer. A buddy and I were talking, maybe I'll have another boat by then that I'll be stripping down and I'll save all this off the newer model that has the, as you guys seen in previous videos, has all the hydraulics going out the bottom. And then we'll put a two-way uh, hydraulic system. So you got a positive up, positive down, uh, pressure so this is just a one-way cylinder as you can see here it goes out but when you reverse the pump it like it relieves the pressure and that's the weight of the either the thrust of the motor or the just general weight of it let it you know go down so all right i hope i've caught you up i'm gonna put you on a tripod um like i said i described what we're gonna do i'm gonna put you on a tripod i'm gonna put you on time lapse and if there's anything that i think is pertinent to tell you about as we're putting this back together I will stop, get you some close-up shots of it, and then go from there, okay? The other thing I've been having trouble with lately was with my GoPro Hero 11 overheating. Well, I've got this media mod case that wraps around the whole outside, and there again, traps more heat, because this thing, when it's operating, uh, generates quite a bit of heat. They get quite warm, and if you got the sun shining on it, that, that doesn't help at all. If you have a breeze going across, because these are designed to be action cameras and not vlog cameras like we're doing, using them for, uh, it seems like without the case, they seem to do okay putting this media mod case, which allows me to use an external mic to get you better sound quality and all that stuff. Uh, seems to trap a lot of heat. And uh, so what I did tonight is I took the thing to my bandsaw. Because the other thing I've had complaints about is that you got to disassemble the whole thing to get the battery out and put a new battery in. Well, now I've got it with this media mod case. I can just pull the media mod case off because I saw, let's say about half of it away. I've got the cold shoe to hook the, you know, this thing here can slide into place and hold the receiver on. And uh, I know this probably doesn't interest a lot of you, but 
I just sawed up a, I don't know how much these cost, 70, 80 bucks. I just sawed one up with my bandsaw to see if I can get rid of the overheating problem. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, let me get you on a stand. Let's get busy going after this. And because uh, we're planning on having the boat, this out on the boat, this boat, plan on having this boat out on the water this weekend. My buddy's going to take me out in it. And uh, I'm going to get you some awesome drone footage of this boat in action. Plus, we're going to see if we can catch some fish, which will be fun. So hopefully I can get this video done. If I get it done this coming Saturday, which has been, it's been weeks in the works. So let's call it month or so in the works to get this done. Uh, but you'll see it Sunday. Okay, guys, I got to admit, I've been hitting the struggle bus pretty hard on this one so far. I had you on time lapse and we tried to get this out drive back in. I'm on uneven ground trying to use my little wooden stand. I had no luck at that. It needs to be on flat ground to work decently. The other problem I ran into is I want to share with you is this little brass piece right here is, you know, getting that straight and making sure it's straight in line to line up on. Let me get down here and show you because it needs to line up on. This is your shifter right here that goes up to your shift cable. So that's got to slide straight in through this whole mess, right? Well, I was having trouble. I was looking at it, trying to get it in there. And when I looked at it from this way, it looked like the brass piece was too far one direction. So I started looking at this a little closer and let's get this greasy thing out of the way. And I was looking down in here and it seemed like this was the brass piece was a little bit off shifted one way versus the other. So I think it was like too far to the left and it was making contact. And as I look in there, it needs to be hammered one way or the other to, you know, get straightened out. So I got to start, I'm, I'm digging into that right now to try to figure out why is it not centered? Because everything in here is centered up and down. So that has to be in center of all this over here. So that's what I'm struggling with right now. Had had it most of the way in there and now I had to pull it back off and I had to actually wrestle it in, couldn't use a stand, it didn't work right. So it's been a tough, yesterday evening was tough, but now I'm gonna back out, I'm back out here. I'm gonna try wrestling through it again. So I'm gonna put you back on time lapse for a minute or two. I don't try to waste your time. That's not my goal here. Uh, I want you to learn along with me, but I'm gonna do some measurements here, see what I can find out. Sometimes that brass piece, depending on how it was taken apart and put on previously, can get a little bit out of whack. I'm trying to, my goal is to get it back in whack and uh, I'm gonna admit it by whacking on it, right? And see if I can get it back to where it needs to be. So that's what I'm gonna be doing and uh, wish me luck, please. All right, guys, we've got a lot of this buttoned up. Um, this hydrofoil, we take a couple bolts out so we get this counter rotational skeg or control skeg or whatever you want to call this thing on the bottom um, back in place. Another little thing I just did, uh, you guys have seen the, you know, these trim pumps on these old boats, they don't hold up. You know, you can always go to SCI Marine. They can hook you up with a new trim pump so you don't have that problem. Uh, some of this older stuff is a little harder to get once you get past, you know, pre-1970, let's call it. And uh, so what I've done here, you guys are going to think I'm crazy, but it works really well, is you take a piece of PVC or some kind of plastic conduit that just will fit over the diameter of, of the lift cylinder. Because you can see this thing will just, in about, you know, 10 minutes will sag halfway down. Well, most people you see have these older boats will have this uh, a strap from here to here or from here to back here. 
Now, some people put it right here, and they'll hook, hook something from here to here. And it's just, you know, it's not great. It's not great, and the looks of it is kind of terrible. This kind of hides some problems <laughs> because, you know, you're trimming on your lake, you, you get out, you go, and all that stuff, and you don't worry about this, but you don't want this drag in the ground when you're trailering it. So I usually, I cut a couple of these PVC, this is CPVC, that just fit over the shaft so I can actually lift this up a little bit and snap this over like that. And you can usually do it while your trim's still up. You come back here and snap these on. And what's cool is that'll rest against that and it puts all the stress where it belongs on the shafts. And that's not gonna hurt a thing. And then when you, all you gotta do is lift it. You can pull, have somebody in the boat or yourself, you can trim it up. And then all you do is make sure you pull these off before you go to the water. But yeah. That makes it a lot nicer for trailering. You don't have this ratchet strap you're dealing with. You can take these two off, pop them in the gunnel in the boat. When you're loading out, you just grab them out of the gunnel, pop them in there, you're ready to head down the road. So that's a little touch up I did on his boat here. We also put this uh, nice little skeg repair replacement slash whatever stainless from SEI Marine on here. Uh, you'll find links to the description below. It's very reasonably priced. It's stainless. It'll make your beat up, torn up, broken off skeg look like brand new again. Now, I will admit, as you saw at the end of this, right before this segment of the video, that we were bringing out the cherry picker. This one... <laughs> This was this one was just determined to fight me. First thing I did wrong, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain everything I've done wrong here so you know. Uh, first thing I did wrong was I parked it here on uneven ground. I honestly would have been better off in a flat part of my yard in the grass with a piece of plywood than on this angled concrete with cracks in it and stuff like that to use my little lift to put put this thing and guide it on for me. So we brought the cherry picker. This one has a little eyelet here on the top. I put a little hook in there. We were able to suspend it on my cherry picker, engine hoist, whatever you guys want to call it. And I was able to, you know, take about five or six variables out of the equation by just having it hang there. And then we got it lined up in there. We actually ended up putting the prop back on so I could actually rotate the shaft and get the, the CV knuckle lined up. So that'd go in a little bit. Then you got to rotate a little bit more and then the spline would go in and then we're all, you know, all buttoned up here. But that was, whew, that was, that was a struggle for sure. But we got everything put back on. All the boots are back in place. They're all holding nice and tight and doing exactly what they need to do. We test fired it last night. We ran it, everything, and we had to adjust the shift cable. So one of the things I was fighting is you, I showed you earlier where you have the brass foot piece or foot looking piece upside down boot looking piece that's on this piece that is your shift um going into that slot well that slot's controlled by your cable that's hooked to your throttle control well we pulled all that out and had to put it back in well without that cable being held in place decent you know with the shifter itself it was trying to wiggle on us and was fighting us so we just went ahead and quickly put the cable back in place and so the throttle handle would actually hold that where we wanted it and then it, it went together much better uh, then we spent some time adjusting the shift linkage so that the forward and reverse throw is about the same you know engagement forward is verse because you can adjust that uh, but yeah it's uh we got her done <laughs> mercy now i'm gonna put some marine grease and all the all the joint fittings we're gonna grease that up i've got a, on the shift linkage i gotta go back in there and put me a uh uh, I got to find two fine quarter 28 fine thread nuts to trap that thing in place with some washers. Uh, hopefully I can find some nylock ones. That'd be ideal. But uh, we're ready to go in the water. Uh, I believe I've got, we're going to put the engine cover back down, put some seats back in place. And uh, we'll be on the water fishing with this thing tomorrow morning. A buddy and I are getting up early. We're taking it down. This is the first time this boat will be out this year. My son and I affectionately call the first time out with a boat every year, especially on these old boats. It could be a, a shakedown, breakdown run because if it's going to go wrong, it'll go wrong the first time you're out. And if it doesn't go completely wrong, you can get back to the boat ramp okay and do a little more things so your next outing is even better each time, each time you make an improvement. All right, 
I think I can about wrap up what's going on here. Like I said, a couple of nuts there, that's done. I tighten this whale tail up or hydrofoil or whatever you want to call it. It's an old version of one. This boat has a lot of bow rise. Even when you're trimmed all the way down, the nose of this boat will come up and my buddy, he will actually lose the horizon on the nose of this boat. And, uh, but then it planes out perfect at its lowest setting. So, you know, it's like, it's not like it's over trimmed when you take off. It's just the way this boat is. These, these uh, hydrofoils literally will cut your bow rise in half. That's my experience with them so far. The bow rise will literally cut in half. And, and because of this prop wash coming up here, it actually has a lifting action, so to speak, to keep that, you know, it's counteracting and it gets you, it jumps on plane twice as fast as been my experience. Some of you might argue with me and I'm just, I'll argue, I'll argue till I'm blue in the face. These do help. Do they put some adverse stress or a little more stress on some things here? A little bit, but I haven't seen it to the point where it actually will do damage to anything. So, um, so uh, I'm, I'm pretty tickled with how this came out. Like I said, we rode, we were struggling a lot. I just, I'll admit to that. This was, this was the hardest one I've done yet. And um, I'm, it sounds, maybe it sounds a little sadistic, but I'm looking forward to the next couple I do because every time I do it, the struggle, I learn something and the struggle gets a little less. And uh, you know, I can't stress enough how much patience you need to have when working with this. Now, I wanna, I'd love to hear some feedback on you guys' is that 3M5200, how much luck you've had with it, uh, trying to put it on when you're stretching the boot out, because it is, makes things slickery, greasy, and the way I did it with everything collapsed and letting it set up and cure before I stretched it out and you know finished tightening the clamps and stuff, uh, that worked for me. The other thing I did that you, you can't see while it's up is I actually drilled you know, I showed you I drilled a hole in this side. I actually drilled another hole here to give me access to clamps. And that's the reason I'm doing that. I wouldn't recommend it for everybody unless you're really confident in what you're doing. But I know that I'll be servicing my boats for years. I don't usually, <laughs> I've sold one boat <laughs> and the rest of them I've kept. And, and there again, I don't typically do any customer work for anybody. And I would never drill into somebody else's boat unless, you know, I told them and they agreed that it's okay to do. So we drilled, my dogs are getting active. Um, so we drilled a few holes. So the next time, two, three, four, five years from now, when those gimbal boots need to replace, be replaced, I can do it so much easier because I'm gonna have two ways, I can get it two clamps from here, I can get it a clamp from over here real easy and the rest of them from the bottom and the struggle bus is no more. Hey, hey Mercury, how you doing buddy? Say hi to everybody outside. Huh? They've seen you catch a frisbee. They see how skilled you are. Yeah, good boy. Yeah, he's excited. I think he wants to throw some frisbee. I'll have to do that with him. All right, folks, we're going to get things buttoned up. And I think that's all I want to tell you for this segment. And we'll see you on the water. We're going to get you some awesome drone footage of this boat in action. And we'll do some bow rise. We'll get some comparisons so you can see. I, won't, I guess I shouldn't say comparisons because this is going to stay on it. Um, but we're going to going to have some fun and hopefully rip some lips. We'll see you on the water. All right, folks, I am so embarrassed. You know, I, I went out with my buddy on that boat and I was gonna fly the drone, get you some good drone footage. Thought I was recording and uh, all my SD cards were in the shop here. Yep, so I'll have to bring you up some vintage footage from when we had it running before. You've seen some of this before. I'll bring some of that up, but we were out there on the lake for four hours this morning, got out there early. The boat performed beautifully, runs great. The bow rise with that uh, hydrofoil on there, that I call it antique hydrofoil because it's an older style. Bow rise was probably only a third of what it used to be. I mean, the front end just barely comes up. That boat just basically goes almost flat up on the plane and gets up on the plane at least twice as fast. I, he let me drive it. This, I had this boat, this is what's crazy, is if I had this boat for a while, and I worked on it for a while, and uh, when I had it just about running and good, or I didn't have it running, I guess, he came over and helped me get it running last year, uh, we made a trade for it. And I had never driven that boat. I had ridden in it, uh, just on a no-wake lake, 
Uh, and then uh, that finally let me drive it today. And man, that's a nice boat. That that's the first time I've been in a very forward. That that uh, driver compartment is three feet ahead of where mine is on my 18 foot Starcraft. And it's just a different feel when you're driving it. It's almost like a it's not really like a cab over truck type feel, but it just you know it's a different being that far ahead of the motor and that close to the bow of the boat and driving it. It's smooth. Uh, we didn't run across too much rough stuff, but it ran really well. So a lot of the good stuff went on with that boat. We got a lot of things handled on it. Uh, like I said, the struggle bus was in full swing working on that one, but she starts, she runs, and, and, this is another neat thing that I did. So I have a little trolling motor, a little 30 pound thrust, 36 inch trolling motor, and he had a kicker plate, as you see in the video there, right before this segment, there's a kicker plate on the back where you can hang yourself, you know, a little five horse, 10 horse, whatever, for a kicker motor for trolling and whatnot. So I said, I said, hey, I texted him the night, the night before. I said, hey, do you mind if I bring my little 30 pound thrust, thrust trolling motor that I have on the John boat and a, bat, and a battery and stick it in the back of your boat and let's just see how that improves because he's using this boat for fishing and getting it's big enough to get his family in and, and do all the fishing. It's got high enough side walls. It's safe for the kids, you know, type of thing uh, without it being a pontoon, I guess, you know. But I said, do you mind if I bring my trolling motor along and we'll put it on there and see how it moves that boat around. Well, lo and behold, it actually worked really well. And it, uh, it was nice because before last year when he was fishing in, it was pull up to a spot with the, you know, the gas engine, hopefully slow down, reverse, stop, throw an anchor out, hopefully holds you in a position that you want to be in and all that stuff. Well, the cool part is today we were able to put the trolling motor down and just maneuver that thing around nice and easy and slow. Uh, yeah, it wasn't fast. I think the fastest we got was like 1.5 miles an hour. But it ain't about racing, right? It's about just moving from one spot to another and testing out areas and see what the fish finder, you know, shows you if there's anything swimming underneath it you might be able to hook up. But we caught, you know, he caught one large mouth, not a great big one, but a decent little large mouth and one bluegill. And uh, so we didn't get skunked. It was a great day. It was a great day. I'm going back out there tomorrow. Uh, hopefully, I've got a project here I'm going to test out tomorrow. I'm going to go back out tomorrow and uh, my son, the drone pilot, that knows how to put a you know an SD card in and maybe fly it and keep it on the boat. And I was actually flying okay, but I got I, I have a lot of practice to do. I'll admit that. So might be in an upcoming video, maybe at the end of this video that I'm going to probably film tomorrow, you'll see some drone footage of that boat in action. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was it was a pretty good day. It was a pretty solid day. He liked that trolling motor so much. Now I needed a trolling motor to keep on my John boat because I use it for you know just in case because the good enough John boat, I have motors on there that sometimes aren't quite good enough so far. I'm three for three on the, on the Mercury, but uh, we'll get that one sorted out. But anyway, I, uh, he went and we stopped by a local sports store. He bought him a 30 pound thrust. There were, there were bigger ones. He was thinking about getting a bigger one, but he could get this one reasonably priced. He needed it tomorrow. The one we really wanted wasn't in stock. So he got this one, bought him a battery, He's going out tomorrow morning. He's taking his family out fishing in this boat, and that's what it's all about. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, any of the links down below that takes you to SCI Marine, please entertain going there and looking at their stuff. They've got some great stuff. Any of the affiliate, affiliate links that take you to an Amazon website, please use those. Uh, if you go there, and this is, this is as, as drastic as I can explain it, and it really works is I if I had a uh, what do you call it a link to a pair of fingernail clippers and you go there and buy a $500 rod and reel I'll get commission for sending you to the website and I'm not saying I'm, I'm not trying to get to, to you to you just hand me money I'm putting this stuff out content out there to, to try to earn I want to earn my all my stuff you know I'm not looking for handouts but I'll get a commission uh, for that sale it doesn't cost you one thing your experience on Amazon won't be any different than it currently is. Now, if your experiences are currently horrible, I'm sorry, I can't change that. That's not, I have nothing to do with that, but it doesn't change the experience at all. So that's enough of that selling. All right, you guys get out there and have some fun. This is Michael saying if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. And we'll see you on the next video. And we got some outboard stuff coming from you. I hope you guys are excited about, uh, a lot of you have been asking for outboard. Give me some more outboard, enough of this inboard stuff. Enough of this, you know, outdrive stuff i get it i'm sprinkling in some outboards because i got quite a few outboards here to play with and uh we're going after the johnson 99 with a big secrets coming up soon 
uh, discovered the big problem. This, uh, it had a secret that I didn't know about. Let's put it that way. So let's, uh, we're gonna enjoy that one. We're gonna tear the gearbox apart on the upcoming videos, tier, gearbox of the 20 horse Merc. We got something that ain't right there. Uh, Cause I put two new props on it. It ain't a spun prop, it's something in the gearbox, which might lead me back to going, what's that ding ding sound? All right, this is Michael, I'm out. Be good, be kind. Don't forget to rewind. That's so 1980. Five, eight, nope. When was VHS and beta around? I don't remember. <laughs>